scientists have come to a conclusion or a step closer in the past few years to an understanding of the inner workings of these bizarre bodies like neutron stars. The light and gravitational waves that result when two neutron stars will slam into each other together um, can become a black hole. The gravitational waves are folds in space time carved out, so they say, when large masses move around. Black holes in the entire universe is definitely in movement. But to understand the lunar waves or the gravitational waves that I showed over the moon, um, it was crossing over the moon. Is it necessarily just on the moon? Or are these gravitational waves coming from further away when neutron stars and or black holes are in movement they're so heavy these stars and black holes and dense that they um, create a dimple in the fabric of space and time and that distorts space and time right and in the universe our universe here because there are many others the moon is actually going across the entire universe over all the planets and uh, quite possibly, um, since we know that energy and frequency are proportional to one another. Einstein's theory told us that energy was equal to mass. Well, mass, frequency, same thing, apparently. It's proportional to one another. So that frequency we see going by the moon is actual physical mass pushing the fabrics of space and time aside as it's actually going along its surface and just clashing. Neutron stars are excellent emitters of gravitational waves. Squeezing matter beyond nuclear densities invites exotic physical processes, many of which violently transfer large amounts of mass, disrupting space-time and generating um, copious quantities of gravitational radiation. This also includes gravitational waves from radio and millisecond pulsars, magnetars, accreting systems, and newly born neutron stars. And that's possibly what that lunar supposed wave that we saw was. It could be a, quite simply a gravitational wave, like I said, pushing space and time. Have you heard of LIGO Observatory? It has two arms and are each more than two miles, four kilometers long. Um, a passing gravitational wave here on Earth causes the length of the arms to change slightly, and they detect that reading as a gravitational wave uh, hitting Earth. All this basic research is needed, and I'm just talk touching the basics. I'm not getting into particle physics or physics itself. Gravitational waves are disturbances or as I like saying, ripples in the curvature of space-time and it's supposedly generated by accelerated masses, right? They propagate as waves outward from the source at the speed of light. They were first proposed by a couple of people in 1893, Oliver, it's Henry in 1905, but subsequently predicted in 1916 by Albert Einstein on the basis of his general theory of rel relativity. Later, he refused to accept gravitational waves. Gravitational waves transport energy as gravitational radiation, a form of radiant energy similar to the electromagnetic radiation, um, Newton's law, right, of universal gravitation, which everybody, nobody knows about, part of classical mechanics. But here's where science clashes with uh, Einstein's theory. It does not provide for their existence since the law is predicted on the assumption that physical interactions propagate instantaneously at infinity speeds, showing one of the ways the methods of classical physics are unable to explain phenomena like this that's associated with relativity. When massive objects accelerate in space further out, wherever they may be, depending on their size, of, of course, they're going to produce gravitational waves, in theory, traveling at light speeds. The ground-based laser 
Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory here on Earth, which first detected gravitational waves in 215, thus explaining why in 216 they came to the theory that gravity was definitely in the form of a wave. In general, every visualization of gravity that you have ever seen is either completely false or oversimplified. You've never, ever seen a correct visualization of flat space and time. Example, no gravity at all. The reason for that comes out of um, all the different ways that people um, use tools to visualize gravity, like um, different geometry, etc. Differential geometry, where certain uh, mathematical equations and certain fields clash with each other. We're right, like, literally in the beginning of time as we're zooming up on the Apennine Mountains here. In the beginning of time of understanding exactly what the hell is going on outside of Earth. We don't even understand Earth and we're looking further out into space to understand it. So, I hope you appreciated that uh, basic, uh, pretty detail, depending on how smart you are. For me, that was like pretty much for my head to understand about gravity, but it has to do a lot with what I'm capturing. So, can we visually see gravity waves? Well, we could possibly, in theory, see the space and time being pushed away as these high accelerated uh, speeding particles are flying through space. So when people ask me, what is that waviness that we're seeing between Earth and the moon, a whole bunch of theories come up. People say, well, it's this, it's that, and we're probably, all of us, partly right, right? Um, space and time, ripples in space and time, there's continual movement. I've heard it compared to a river that's very calm before the rain, and then when it starts raining, these ripples, ripple effects, every time a raindrop falls in the quiet ocean or river, imagine it, the universe, and all these ripples start going outwards quicker and quicker and hitting each other, clashing each other, and then causing all this disturbance to the point in the universe where you can't really see the gravity waves. You just see all this jumbled up interaction of mass and heat and cold causing precipitation, thus causing life-forming vegetation on the planets. Does the Big Bang theory um, exist? Well, there were definitely Big Bangs in the universe and its creation, in theory. And they say that long ago, the universe had such high temperatures, no matter what the mass did inside of that um, high area of temperature, it didn't change the universe. There were no big bangs. But then something happened where um, it's also inevitable to think that mass will cons consume itself. And then um, in the end, there'll be just radiation left everywhere, all over. And then those gases yet again will clash with each other, cause another big bang, and then more mass will be shot out far into space, thus, you know, forming the floor to our universe where we are here. Very hard to understand. So exactly how can you detect gravitational waves from your home with your telescope? Not even going to go there. But I'll tell you what. To find gravitational waves, scientists need galaxy-sized detectors called pulsar timing arrays. These arrays use specific sets of millisecond pulsars, which rotates as fast as a blender blade. Millisecond pulsars sweep beams of radiation from radio to gamma rays, pass over line of sight, appearing to pulse with incredible regularity, like cosmic clocks. As long gravitational waves pass between one of these pulsars and Earth, they delay or advance the light arrival time by a billionth of a second by looking for a specific pattern of pulse variations among pulsars of an array. Scientists expect they can reveal gravitational waves rolling past them. Well, I'm going to leave that to them. So can a camera pick up um, a difference or a movement in the space-time continuum visually or um, with the camera. Either way, science is just a theory. Mathematical equations and observations based on a platonic realism. Science. <laughs> Yeah.
Cause the slow's just coming soon. The slow's just coming soon. 